Hey guys, what is up? It is the Fast Break Report here bringing you guys another vlog. So I kind of wanted to talk about the New Orleans Pelicans. I, I feel like I haven't really talked about them really all year, to be honest with you, outside of like Zion Williamson stuff. But even the Zion Williamson stuff is looking like it's it's pretty good. I, I'm just going to call it what it is, man. The New Orleans Pelicans have been impressive this season. And they're a team that I think could upset uh, the Los Angeles Clippers in the playoffs. Right now, if the playoffs began today, uh, the Pelicans would be playing the Clippers. Uh, the four and five spot would be playing against each other. And I'm just going to call it what it is. This team has gotten significantly better. I don't know what happened after the All-Star break, but they have really like flipped a switch. They lost to Boston yesterday, 104 to 92. And yeah, they've, they've been kind of inconsistent. You know, they're they're a team that's like they've lost to Orlando, they lost to Oklahoma City, they lost to Boston, they lost to Cleveland, uh, they have beaten Miami. Um, like some of their wins have not come against great teams. But the thing is, like, this is a team that I feel like once they get into the playoffs could be a team that's like they they just they have the ability to upset someone. Like, yeah, they they've lost a lot of games to like important teams, like, you know, against playoff teams, but the thing is this team defensively is kind of fucking ridiculous. Like, I, I'm just going to call it what it is. Like, they're currently 5th in defensive rating in the NBA, 12th in offense, and they are right now 4th uh, out of all 30 teams in net rating for a plus 5.1 net rating. Um, there's been a lot of things on this team that have changed significantly. And one of the most important things that has changed significantly is Zion Williamson actually played a decent season this year. J uh, like Zion Williamson has played 63 games this year, which honestly feels like it's a whole hell of a lot compared to what he's done in the past. I mean, if we look at his you know previous couple years, his rookie year he only played 24 games. Uh, second year played 61. He was an All Star. Then he didn't play all of 2021, 2022. Then he didn't play in 2022-2023 for more than 30 games. He played 23 games but was still an all-star. This year he played 63 games and wasn't an all-star. Now granted, the stats were down. Uh, he wasn't averaging 26 a game. He's averaging 22. Uh, he's shooting 58% from the field, 35% from three, which isn't bad. You know, Zion Williamson kind of gets a, a knock for not being a good three-point shooter, but if you look at his career numbers in the time that he has played, granted, his rookie year shot 42% from three, but he also only played 24 games, right? His second year, he played 61 games, and he shot 29% from three. Then the year after that, he was injured. Then uh, in 2022, 2023, he was an all-star, but shot 36% from three while only playing 29 games. However, this season was the real first time we got a real sample size from Zion Williamson where he's played 63 games and is shooting 35% from three. Now, granted, the volume is like less than one three-pointer a game, but he's at least making that, that one occasional three that he shoots at 35%. Now, I do think this number is going to go up at some point because obviously Zion Williamson, if he wants to remain in the NBA, uh, he needs to shoot threes more frequently. Another thing also is Zion Williamson is finally taking basketball seriously. I've seen a lot of reports that he's lost a lot of weight. Um, I don't know how much. I Actually, Zion Williamson uh, weight loss, we'll just look it up because he's apparently Zion Williamson has reportedly shed 40 pounds, which is pretty fucking insane. Um this came out uh, a couple days ago. March, uh, it says the real story behind Zion Williamson's weight loss. And just real quick, out of Columbia University is the one who put the, the article out. But uh, shedding a reported 40 pounds, Williamson has sparked a wave of interest in his weight loss journey. The story goes behind shrinking his jersey size. It's a tale of dedication, embracing a healthier lifestyle, and proving that even the most explosive athletes can prioritize long-term health. Dude, Zion Williamson is finally taking basketball seriously, and honestly, for me, that's a huge deal because I was beginning to think he was never going to. Like, I was beginning to get, like, and I think we were all there. I mean, it's been, like, four or five years, and we were like, dude, like, 
When he plays, he's one of the best players on the floor. But if he doesn't start taking care of his health, right, he's he's not going to last in the NBA. And we've seen that, man. Like we've seen it in just the amount of games that he's played. You know, he he hasn't he's only played 60 games one other time in his career. And this year he's played the most games of his career at 63 of them. So and I think weight loss has a lot to do with that, man. You know, when you weigh 280 pounds, you know what I'm saying? When when you're an offensive lineman, essentially. And you're just, you know, all those those impacts on your knees, your feet, and all this other stuff, right? We, we already saw the foot injury. Like, at least we know, like, he's taking his health seriously. And I think Zion Williamson, I don't know who... Like, I don't know if somebody on the team maybe took him under their wing, whether it was Cody Zeller, CJ McCollum, uh, Jonas Valanciunas, like a vet. I don't I don't know who the vet is. I don't know who's in Zion Williamson's corner that is putting him on the right track. I don't know if it's Larry Nance Jr., whoever it is. I, I would think it's maybe Larry Nance Jr., but whoever it is, it is, is turning Zion Williamson's career around. And you know what? I'm sure after Zion Williamson retires, we're going to hear that somebody, you know, really helped him as, you know, as, as a young player, but it's nice to see Zion Williamson finally just taking the sport seriously because he has the ability to be one of the most talented players that we've ever seen. And it just, you know, it's like, there's just so much shit with him. It's like, he wasn't eating right. He wasn't taking the game seriously. He didn't want to play in, in New Orleans, right? Now it seems like maybe he wants to be there. Now it seems like he's taking his health seriously. You know, he's getting paid a whole ass ton of money. And, you know, it's just nice to see that New Orleans is finally getting their return on Zion Williamson. Where just this past offseason, we were saying like how they're probably going to have to trade him. I don't think that's the case anymore. I, I think Zion Williamson is finally growing up a little bit. He's 23 now. I think he's finally growing up a little bit and finally realizing that like if he wants to continue to make millions of dollars in the NBA, he needs to actually take what he's doing seriously. And it's nice to see that. Another guy that I think has made significant improvement this year is Herb Jones. Like Herb Jones, 50% from the field, 42% from three, averaging 11 points a game on like one and a half steals. Essentially, it's 1.3 and a block a game. Like Herb Jones and Trey Murphy the third have been huge for them. You know, they've got guys on their team just stroking it from three. I mean, Larry Nance, granted, Larry Nance has only taken one three-pointer a game, but he's shooting that one three-pointer a game at 42 percent um you know Jordan Hawkins is taking four almost five threes a game shooting 36 percent and he's a rookie for them you look at a guy like uh Najee Marshall he's shooting the three at 38 percent on two and a half attempts a game like this team is not only good defensively but they stroke the shit out of the three-point shot too and teams like that in the playoffs can tend to be really really dangerous now Dyson Daniels as well Dyson Daniels is a guy that we're finally getting a little bit of a sample size out of Dyson Daniels is uh played 53 games this year getting about 21 minutes a game um The defense has been spectacular from Dyson Daniels. One and a half steals a game. Granted, the scoring and the rebounding and the assist numbers haven't been great, but when it comes to a guy who's like just a lockdown defender, like Dyson Daniels seems like he's that guy. Um, You know, he's he's a tall, lanky guard. Um, You know, like the the New Orleans Pelicans just have it where it counts, if that makes any sense. Brandon Ingram is currently injured. Um, Jose Alvarado is day-to-day. This is a team that could really, really cause some problems. That's all I'm saying. Like Jose Alvarado shooting the three at 37% on, you know, uh, three and a half attempts a game. Matt Ryan shooting 40, almost 46% from three on four attempts a game. CJ McCollum, 41% from three on eight attempts a game. I I mean, like this team is stroking the shit out of the three point shot. And when they get into the playoffs, man, like I feel like this is a team that is simply just a whole lot deeper than the Los Angeles Clippers. As much as I like me some Paul George and Kawhi Leonard, and James Harden, I feel like defensively the Pelicans are better and I also feel like the Pelicans are a much deeper team. Um, If you had to give me someone to take in a seven-game series, like I'm taking the Pelicans. Even if Kawhi Leonard does lock down Zion Williamson, they have it on their bench unit to come out and like really, really like take shit over. Their their, their bench unit is very good. So this is a team that I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed with. Um, granted, Jordan Hawkins' field goal percentage is not the greatest, but I feel like he mostly takes three-point three point attempts. Like, his field goal percentage is in, indicative of his three-point percentage. Like, he mostly just takes three-point shots. 
But um, this is a team that I feel like playoff time is going to be very, very scary. And, you know, now that Zion Williamson appears to be taking his his job seriously, I think that's that's going to be that's a good sign for the Pelicans going forward. Um you know, there's 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 a lot to like about this team, and they could be scary if they make it into the second round. Like this is a team that is actually capable of beating another team in the second round. Um, you know, they they like I've said, they've been losing games to a lot of like big teams, but they're competitive. You know, they, yeah, to playoff teams, they've been kind of getting thrown around a little bit. Um, you know, they win a game here, they lose a game here, but. They're a team that if you got to play them in seven games, like I think they could figure it out. And that's that's the thing about this team that I just feel like their record isn't really indicative of how good they are at this current point. They're 45 and 29, I believe if I'm correct. But they're a team that once they get into the playoffs, like they could cause an upset. Yeah, they're 45 and 29 and the Clippers are 46 and 27. And when you also consider with how bad the Clippers have been playing recently, it's not far-fetched to say that the Pelicans could upset the Clippers in the playoffs. And honestly, if they go to the second round, if they if they just catch fire, which is is a very real possibility, they, they could be a team that could, could make the Western Conference Finals. And I know that sounds fucking crazy to say, but they're a really well-constructed roster. They play defense, they shoot the shit out of the three, and they got three guys on their team that are capable of, of putting the ball in the hoop in Brandon Ingram, CJ McCollum, and Zion Williamson. You know, even if Zion not scoring 26 points per game. Brandon Ingram's still a, po- uh, a problem. CJ McCollum's still a problem. And it, it's crazy because CJ McCollum's a guy who's really adapted to almost like this point guard level role for their team. Um, and it's funny because I never saw him really as that type of player. Like he's a guy that I'm just like, he's kind of, he is kind of like a two-way shooting guard, but I didn't expect him to play point guard as well as he plays point guard. Um, and they're a team that could still go into free agency and get themselves a decent point guard and that, you know, because CJ McCollum, I feel like is not really a, a, a true point guard. He's more of a guy that I feel like is a, a you know, a, a shot creating shooting guard uh, or scoring guard. But if you were to get yourself a, a point guard who can distribute, maybe, you know, maybe I, obviously the Pacers don't want to trade TJ McConnell, but if you could get a guy like TJ McConnell, um, you know, maybe an Alex Caruso, like if, if they could, if they could somehow pry Alex Caruso away from the Chicago Bulls, like that's that, that would be a dangerous fucking team. You know, like Alex Caruso shoots the three. Well, he's a good defender. He can facilitate like Alex Caruso is a guy that if he somehow found his way onto the New Orleans Pelicans roster, they could be a very, very dangerous team, um, especially defensively. And then when you figure that, like, you're just going to let CJ McCollum just, you know, not have to worry about distributing and let him score. And also the idea that CJ McCollum can distribute, just getting that from the shooting guard position would be fucking ridiculous. Okay. You would essentially have two playmakers out there and both of them can shoot the ball, which is, isn't like just great. And CJ McCollum, CJ McCollum's got a bigger bag than a lot of us like to admit. Okay. CJ McCollum can put the ball on the floor and shoot shots from mid range. He can cross people. He's, he's very, very good at what he does. So uh, honestly, the Pelicans are a team that is kind of my underdog in the West. Um, I feel like maybe they're not so much an underdog, but I just feel like people aren't talking about them in the way that they probably should be. Uh, the, the Pelicans are, they're a threat. I'm going to call it what it is. They're a threat. So tell me what you guys think about this down below in the comment section below. A like helps me out. Subscribe if you guys want to see more. I'm the Fast Break Report, and I'm out of this motherfucker. Peace, guys.